This is the story of the everybodies. Fred, Maggie and the twins. For many years past, Fred and Maggie, everybody, with all their friends, their fun and their problems, have lived at Dingledale, just an ordinary house in a nice, respectable suburb. Here it was that their twin children, Rick and Margie, were born, and it is the story of this family, which might just as easily be the story of you or me, which we now bring you. You will hear of their joys and sorrows, their trials and excitements, their friendships and enthusiasms, now that the twins are grown up. And more than all these things, you will hear of the love and loyalty to each other, which makes the word home into something more than a name. We meet them now in their charming new house with its pretty gardens and tree-shaded tennis court on the morning after the twins' 18th birthday. Ethel, the good, solid housekeeper, who has been with them since the twins were four, is busy in the kitchen, humming contentedly at her work. It seems, however, that the peace of the moment is to be rudely shattered by the entrance of the girl twin, Margie. A twin arriving anywhere is always more or less a danger signal. Hello, Ethel. What are you making? Chocolate pudding. Mm. And you'll keep your fingers out of it, young Margie. I've only just enough for the basin as it is. Oh, I say, Ethel. Look out, the cat. Where's the cat? I... Oh, you are slay, you young Margie. I've got Ow. enough to do in this place without having fun and games with you. But I only got a spoonful and that slap hurt. It's your dignity that's hurt more than your... Where's everyone? Young Rick's in the dining room and your mother's in the garden. In the dining room? What's the matter with him? Hey, Rick! Rick! What on earth are you doing? Oh, fooling about. What have you got all the glasses piled up like that for? Oh, I see what it is. You've built another bridge, eh? Yes, not bad, is it? You see, the stress is taken. Have you got to use Mum's best crystal goblet? Oh, they're all right. Hmm. I hope you're right. But what's the matter with you, messing about indoors? Any other time you'd have gone for a swim. Holidays are nearly over. You should worry. You won't have to go to school again. You'll be going into business with Pop. Mm, that's what's got me down. I'm not interested in silks and cottons and all that stuff. I never have been. Well, why don't you tell him? Oh, you can't tell your old man a thing like that. He'd be hurt. Yes, but... No. I'm expected to carry on. I suppose I'll have to do it. Gosh, you're lucky. Girls aren't expected to do anything. Perhaps it'd make it all right if I went into the business. Oh, it wouldn't be the same thing at all. And anyway, girls are no good at business. Why aren't they? Oh, anyhow, the exam results come out tomorrow and... Tomorrow? Gosh, I didn't know that. Oh, I'll keep my fingers crossed all night. Oh, Rick, I'm beginning to feel a bit sick already. Oh, it doesn't matter much whether I get through or not. They'd have to matriculate to sell soft goods. But you worked so hard. Just to please Mum and Pop. Then I'll still keep my fingers crossed. Oh, I think I can hear them coming up the path. Well, keep quiet about what I've just said. And help me put these glasses straight. All right. Hey, look out. The bridge. <gasps> oh, Rick. It's down. Oh, how many broken? Oh, only one, but... Oh, gosh, here they are. You'll have to own up. Of course I will. Uh, hello, Pop. Uh, yeah. Hello, Mum. Here comes George Washington again. Oh, well, Rick, what have you broken this time? A goblet. One of the best ones? Afraid so. Gosh, Mum, I'm sorry. It was an accident. He couldn't help it. <laughs> no, I'm sure he couldn't. So we won't say any more about it. No. Poor old Pop will just part up for a new one. You could take it out of my pocket money. <laughs> I could, Ricky, but you know I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I know Ethel comes from a musical family, but sometimes I wish she didn't. You should be used to Ethel singing. We've practically been brought up on it. Yes, when I was little, I remember drinking my soup to Ethel's rhythm. Terrible kids I've got. Every time I sing in the bath, I'll feel self-conscious now. 
wondering what you're doing to my rhythm. Don't worry, darling. You haven't got any. Uh, <laughs> that you said about me, young Frederick? It's so hot I've made some ice cream, but I don't think you deserve any. Good old Ethel. Bring out your frozen assets. Uh, well, that's better than having no assets at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Ethel. Oh, goodness. Oh, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Ice cream, Fred? Eh? Oh, uh, yes, thank you, Maggie. Just a little, dear. None for me, thanks, Mum. I'll have her share. I had three buckets after tennis this morning. I thought you'd given up tennis for this summer. So he had until Susie Gregory joined the cl club. Oh, Susie Gregory. I don't know her, do I? No. Well, uh, you must ask her home to tea, my boy. Yes, now, that'd be lovely. Why not make it next Sunday? Oh, all right. But she's a bit different from most of Margie's friends. She's... Her mother and father are divorced. Well, I don't suppose that's her fault, Margie. I'd very much like to meet her, Rick. Ask her on Sunday. Yes, and Margie can ask back. No, I won't. Well, why ever not, dear? Oh, I... Oh, now, Margie, you haven't got cross with each other, have you? Oh, of course we haven't. It's just that... Oh, all right, I'll ask him. Well, anyhow, I'm going to cool off in the garden before dinner. Uh, you might come out, Rick, when you're ready. I want to have a little chat with you. Gosh, what have I done? There, now. You've done something awful, Rick. No, I haven't, Mum. Tours honour. Can't think of a thing. Oh, a little chat with one's children doesn't necessarily mean a reprimand, Maggie. Or it shouldn't. Good gracious me, you do seem to have grown up on me overnight. Yes, they're terribly tall in that, aren't they? Well, here I am, Pop. Oh, um, uh, sit down, Rick. Have a cigarette? Huh? I, uh, uh, no thanks. I don't... Oh, what's the use? You know I do, don't you? Thanks, Pop. <laughs> Matt's... Good. Well, now, it's about your future, Rick. I haven't worried you during your holidays, but your results come out tomorrow. Yes. Well, now, I'm not a terribly wealthy man, but uh, we're comfortable. And when you and Margie were youngsters, your mother and I decided that you were each to be given the chance to do what you wanted to. So we've had a special fun for it. Margie still has another year of school, so we've no need to worry about her yet. But the time's come to think about you. Now, you wanted to be everything from a train driver to a trapeze artist, but what's really in your mind, Rick? I, I always thought you wanted me to go into the business with you. I'd like you to, but I'll tell you something, Rick. I went into the soft goods business because my father was in it, but I wanted to be a doctor. Oh, I'm not a bad businessman as they go, but I think I'd have been a better doctor. And we, your mother and I, want you to do what you're going to do best. I... Oh, Dad. Do you want to go into my business? Well, no. I'd like to be... Oh, gosh, I hope you'll understand. Well, uh, as long as it's not the trapeze artist, I think I will. <laughs> well, well, I want to do something big. Yes, well, I suppose at 18, that's only natural. But some of the biggest work in the world is done by people in the humblest jobs. It isn't always the thing that looks big that is big. Well, I want to build things, things that'll last. Must be the grandest feeling to look at a river that you've dammed, or at a tunnel, or a bridge. But I suppose you call that conceit. I think I know what you mean, Rick. So you want to be an engineer, is that it? If you don't mind. And if it won't cost too much. It doesn't depend on the cost. It depends on yourself. You mean I can be an engineer? If you pass your examination tomorrow. Oh, Rick. He'll pass, Pop. I know he will. Yes, of course he will. Well, if he doesn't, I'll be the last one to blame him, but... On the other hand, Rick, if you don't get through, I don't see much point in starting in on a lot more of the same thing. Do you? No. So it all depends on the morning paper. Oh, dear, I can, I can hardly wait. How do you think I feel? Don't worry, Rick. You won't fail. Are you sure? You can't. I just bet Ethel ten bob you wouldn't, and I haven't got ten bob. <laughs> Well, it seems that young Margie's anxiety will be even greater than Rick's. Although awaiting the results of the exams will keep everybody in a high pitch of excitement. You too will want to know what goes on in the home of Fred, Maggie and the twins. So don't fail to hear the next episode in the story of the everybody's. <laughs>